Hello potential friends, welcome back to the vlogging nook with me, Alexandra. The other weekend I went to TCAF, which is, um, okay, I don't remember what the acronym actually stands for, but I'm gonna guess that it stands for Toronto Comics and Arts Festival, because it was a festival full of comic and graphic novel and zine creators, and it was super cool, and I bought a ton of stuff. So I'm going to run through what I got from there and also tell you about how I met the co-creator of a graphic novel that I had to study in university and I found out that my professor is an idiot and I was right. <laughs> so just wait, wait for that. I actually recreated the look that I wore to TCAF because frankly, iconic. I figured that if any place was the place to wear a sequin camouflage jacket to, it would be a comic book convention. And I was right. I got so many compliments on this jacket that I stopped counting after 10, including compliments from like artists and super cool comic book like professionals that Tara was freaking out over because I went with Tara. The consensus is that I have sick fashion sense. Yeah. But who cares what I was wearing? What did I get is the real question. I've got all of it like spread out in front of me here, but I don't really have an order for how I'm gonna talk about things. So I'm just gonna grab things, show ya. First thing I got, I got these guys. This is like a little cute thing. It's like, what makes an object queer? And it was just, it was, it was cute and funny. This is like essays and stuff from different people's perspectives about like queer identities and whatnot. And it's got some like comics as well in it. In order to get some structure here, what other small zines did I get? Let's see. This was something that I'd actually seen before. I looked into this at Canzine in uh, the fall, but I didn't buy it. I remember it, it stuck in my head. I really like the cute little bows. I like that it's tied together instead of stapled. It's all in watercolor. It's about sad things. I love sad, beautiful things. Look, oh, look at, look at the art. Oh God, that's so pretty. That's so pretty. It's by Chiffon. I'm gonna put the links and names of all the artists in the description below. If I don't have anybody's name, then I will try and find it. Yes, I'm the worst. <laughs> I was drawn to this because of the title. I was like, you know what? Grief is weird. I asked the artist about it and it's a bunch of like daily comics sort of things that she made after her mother died. When I read it fully later on, I cried so, um, to me, that's the sign that your art is successful. I'm probably gonna butcher lots of people's last names. I'm very sorry. Um, this is by Sarah Getter. So this, <laughs> this, I'm going to admit, I was drawn to it just because it says OTP. And I was like, OTPs? I have loads of those. <laughs> it's by an artist, uh, Makinaro, who Tara was like really excited about. This is an actual real fossil that was found where um, two completely different species of creatures were found like nestled together. So this is, like, it's a little story about how the creatures, how the creatures met each other and stuff and became pals. Yay! It's cute! I'm gonna admit something to you guys. I only got this because of what they did with the cover. It's good little thing in the front. It's like, OMG, privacy please. And it's sheer and if you go, there's a little ghost. Ah, that's so cute! I'm sorry, that is so good. That is so, that is so clever. The artist, Shabana Sikdio that. <laughs> she she said she was really pleased with herself for that and I was like, you should be. That is hilarious. It's little comics just about, about this little ghost figure being cute. So that was another impulse purchase. Oh, I didn't even notice that she signed and put a little ghost in it. Oh, I hope you can see that. That's so cute. Oh, I forgot. Going back to OTP, I signed it and drew me the little, it's not a dog. It's one of the creatures in the thing. Yeah. That's the fun thing about TCAP, okay? You meet the artist, and if you get them to sign it, sometimes they draw you a little thing. And it's just a good time. I love art, I love artists, I love seeing people talk about their art, I like buying people's art and seeing them get excited about the fact that they made a sale. <laughs> you know, it's just so pure. Let's see, the last like little zine thing I got um, is actually this tiny little guy. Endless Distances by Alex Stew. Even though I bought this more spur of the moment, it's become one of the, my favorite things that I got there. I bought it because it starts with the woman I love as a warrior and I was like, that sounds like a story I'd be interested in. I don't know why I used that voice just then. The art style is just really, really sharp with like the color imagery and stuff. Ah, oh, it's so, so cool and like graphic designy. There's this section in the middle where it like, it folds out. 
it folds out to show like the interior thoughts of of a character during a conversation and I just think that's so cool. So those were short zines that I got but um, let's look at smaller things that I got. Remember this artist? I got a sticker from her. This is Lemon Pup. <laughs> Lemon Pup! Is that not adorable? I got this sticker. It's from a graphic novel that I haven't read called Monstrous and then I've got I got this this sticker. So this is from The Adventure Zone. So at the back we got Kara Mickey Oh, Carrera. So I've got I've got two things here that I got from the same stall. Now I've opened it, so I've actually ruined the presentation of this. But it used to say Quest Pack on it. What it is is it's actually an instant D and D character. So it's got all these little cards that are all the things that come in this person's pack. This person comes with a serpent scroll. They've got a pencil and paper. Got a, a mandrake root. This is my favorite. This is a, apparently a trapped soul. Why does this D&D character have a trapped soul? Who knows? You get to decide. So I just thought that was such a cool concept. Most dolls are just selling their books and like prints or stickers or pins and stuff and this person went out of the box and made this cool like interactive sort of little thing that you could get and it also comes with a miniature story for it and it's just a little thing. Well a brief story where your character does something and this was Pam Wishbo. And I got one other thing at her stall. Professor Pam's semi-famous Hexbreaker. Diddle -diddle. What it is, is it's a little clay tablet that apparently what you do, according to these instructions inside, is that if you feel like you've been cursed, you know, things are just going really bad for you lately, then take this guy out and you smash it and it will break your curse. So it's a, it's a one use only thing. So I've got a Hold on to this, wait until my my life is terrible, and then just cathartically destroy something. Love that concept. I love destruction. Mm. One of my last purchases of the day was I got these. They're stud earrings that are little Lego blocks. I got two pins. So I got this guy, which is a really cool just like eyeball pin. Tara got the other pin that this artist made, um, which was a heart with like a little tear coming out of it. So we can we can aesthetically match because the colors are all the same. And it's just, is this is such a good pin. I've worn it like three days in a row because it goes with everything. It's just so pastel, so beautiful, but creepy kind of. Love that aesthetic. I got another pin and I've got a little story about that one. I went up to this person's stall and I'm looking around and I see a pin and I see this pin, except in pristine quality, not like kind of damage like this one is. And I go, wait a second, I have that pin. But not only do I have that pin, I got this pin at a Haley Kyoko concert. I went to the concert and like halfway through the concert, I realized my foot was clacking weirdly on the ground. I was like, why does my shoe feel like that? And I reached down and I looked at my shoe and this pin was embedded in to the bottom of my platform shoes. I kind of was like, is this anybody's pen? Is this, is that anybody knows pen? And then I put it in my bag. Very punk rock it felt. I obviously, I had to buy something from this artist because I had stolen one of their pins accidentally. She thought it was funny. I got the other pin that she had for sale there. This, it is a tiny, tiny butt. I love it. <laughs> it's just a, t it's just a tiny butt. It's like, there it is. As soon as I bought it, I put it right here and I wore it for the, for the rest of the day. And someone was like, oh, I love your tiny butt pin. So I told them where they could buy it. So I hope I brought that artist more business. I love it. I've worn it surreptitiously to work on my jacket. So hopefully no one's been like, um, unprofessional. <laughs> All right, so that's like the small stuff I've got. So I got two prints while I was there. So one of them, <laughs> this is a comic that I had seen on Tumblr. And if you follow me on Tumblr, you might've seen me reblog it. And it is, it is this, this, this gem of an art, an art piece. Every time I look at this, it makes me laugh so much. The fury in his eyes in that last panel. How does the artist convey such expression through birds only? It says jbarkman, falsenees.com. I think I've been forgetting to say the artists. So the other print I got, you guys know I like Star Wars. 
There was shockingly little Star Wars related stuff there, but as we were in the web comics room, we were walking along and I saw out of the corner of my eye the words Rogue One. And I actually did this with my body and made myself like an arrow to squeeze in between two people to get to this artist's stall. This is the print that I got. Um, I almost didn't get it because my nerd brain was like, okay, I love that it's Galen and Jen and I like how she's drawn and it's lovely and everything, but her mother was the one who put the necklace on her, not her father. I'm such a fucking nerd. But eventually I was like, you know what, no. No, I want this in my life. And speaking of Star Wars, that leads us into my big purchases of the day. And by big purchases, I mean books. I bought a Star Wars tie-in book that is canon with like The Force Awakens. So it's not part of the EU that was destroyed when The Force Awakens came out. This is canonically canon. And it's a story about Leia in between The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. The author was there, Cecil um, Castellucci. I wish I'd asked her, how does one get to be a writer for Star Wars? Because honestly, career goals. But I'd forgot to do that. I, I was too flustered. But she talked to me and told me about it and it was great. And she put, to Alexandra, may the force be with you. He may the force be with me. Yes. So I've been slowly reading it on uh, the subway on my way to work. The first really big thing that I got um, was a spur of the moment purchase. This book, Best We Could Do by T. Bui. And it is an illustrated memoir. I am reading from the inside because I haven't really started reading this one yet. It's about her, her family's journey from their war-torn home in Vietnam to their new lives in America. And it's basically like from the perspective of her mother. That's her on the front, the author. And I actually, I really like that um, of all of them, she's the only one who's looking back towards the, the audience, towards the viewer, because she's the one who wrote it. She drew in the inside this for me. It took her like 10 seconds. She was so good. Poor Alexandra, thank you very much. Yes, she was very nice. So I'm excited to read that. It's gonna be the most difficult thing to read that I got, but probably one of the things that will stay with me the longest. Don't worry, I only have like two more things. <laughs> when I realized I had the day off and Tara was like, you should come to TCAP with me, I thought that the only artist that I knew who was gonna be there was going to be the artist of Check Please, which is like the only webcomic I read because it's on Tumblr. So I didn't actually get to meet her because she didn't have a table, she just had signings and they were like super long, but I bought year one and year two of Check Please. And uh, oh, I forgot how much I love it, like reading it all at once is, so nice! It's all in full color and it's so beautiful! So I've, oh, I've already reread all of these. Like, <laughs> that was like the first thing that I sat down and read when I got, when I got back from um, TCAF is we were exhausted, but I sat down and I read these guys before I went to sleep. I thought the only artist I, who would be there that I'd know would be the Check Please artist, but I was looking at some graphic novel books on a table and I saw some stuff by Jillian Tamaki and someone was like, oh yeah, I think she's doing a signing later. And I was like, Jillian Tamaki is here? To make a long story short, Jillian Tamaki is one of the co-creators um, with uh, Mariko Tamaki of a graphic novel called Skim that I had to study in a graphic novel course in uh, my fourth year of university. So I've got it here. And um, I absolutely fell in love with it when I read it. I was in fact too passionate about it to get a good mark on my essay on it because I couldn't be academic. So when I found out there was a Jillian Tamaki signing, I knew I had to go. She was signing from 12 to one and at like 12.40, I was like, oh crap, we have to get down to the bottom floor to go to the Jillian Tamaki signing. When we got there, they were like, oh yeah, the line is capped. Uh, and I was like, okay. They were like, but, but you can hang around. Maybe we can slot you in. So I did. This is a new thing of hers. So I bought this so that I could have something for her to sign and also because I, I want it. And it's a bunch of like vignettes, like a bunch of short stories and stuff. And it's really cool. I've already, I've already read the whole thing. I waited there for 20 minutes and there was a volunteer of TCAF who was standing there ready to like slide me in the second that there was an option. So with, with like five minutes left in the signing, the last official person in the line left. And I was able to like scoot in and be like, hi, hello. I love skim, it changed my life. <laughs> Please sign this for me. I told her that I was too passionate about skim. And so what she, what she drew in it was <laughs> me yelling, Alexandra, too passionate, which 
I love that. I love that. I'm so happy that happened. But when I studied skim in university, the professor had an interpretation of a particular scene that just filled me with like existential rage. There's a scene where two characters kiss. It's a two page spread of these two characters kissing, two female characters. And it's never referred to again in the story in um, like text or anything. And we never see a, like a flashback to that image. So the professor argued that you could take that scene out and it didn't change the story. And I was like, yes it does, it, 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 it completely changes the emotional trajectory of the story and you ruin it if you take it out. And it just made me so mad. I so mad. So I asked Jillian Tamaki, I was like, can you please tell me if this scene happened or if it was a dream sequence as like the professor is saying it could have been. My interpretation is that it could not have been a dream sequence. It had to have happened in order for the story to have the resonance that it did. And it resonated so much with me. And Jillian Tamaki looked at me and she said, you know, when we, were, when we were creating this, uh, that didn't even occur to me, that interpretation that it could be a dream sequence. It's drawn like that because it's it's a it's a moment in time that's very important. She said like, yeah, I, I'm of the opinion you can have your own interpretation, but we didn't even consider that when we were creating it. And she said that Mariko, the other creator, gets really angry when people bring up that theory. And I'm like, she knows what's up. Like, it's... I'm gonna storm back into the University of Toronto. I'm gonna like charge into my professor's office and say, you were wrong, you were wrong, you were wrong. I don't care what your interpretation is. It happened, they kissed, it was important. Ugh. I was just so happy to hear that and to hear that one of the other creators also feels that incredible fury at the idea that this scene could have not happened. <laughs> like, ugh. So I just, it was, it was great. I was so happy to have like met her and like talked to her and had her sign the book and everything. Ah! Also, I got this little postcard with, um, with the stuff. So I've talked for like 7 billion years and I actually have to go to work like right now. <laughs> but that was pretty much all my stuff from TCAF. Might've been like a couple things that I missed or didn't really go into detail about, but yep, it was a really great time. I spent too much money but I'm definitely going again next year. And next year I'll be more prepared. And uh, if, if Jill and Jack is there again, I'm gonna bring, bring Skim. I'm gonna be like, hello, do you remember me? Please sign this. Yes. <laughs> okay, I will see you guys next time. Okay, bye. And it's just, oop, that's a dildo. Let's not look at that page. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Look at him, he's like, ah! <laughs> oh. <laughs> anyway, sorry.